Welcome back to the Fighters Corner Podcast for another podcast episode. I got a quick intro for you guys as I welcome you back to the show. Myself and Mike both previewed the Valor Bare Knuckle Boxing event coming up this weekend that's being run by Hall of Famer Ken Shamrock on September 21st. This is a fantastic card that we're both very intrigued on watching. Uh, not only is the card stacked with guys like Thierry Sokachu and Mark Godbeer, Ishii Smith, JC Lamas, uh, LeVar Johnson's on it as well, but they have a very interesting concept um, that no one's seen before. Uh, it's like a pit concept, so um, I have no clue what this thing looks like. I haven't seen pictures of it or anything like that, but they're building it uh, today. And it's not a cage. Um, it's not a ring. It's not anything that they got like at the bare knuckle stuff, uh, the BKFC. It's nothing like that. Uh, this is something completely different. So I'm definitely going to watch this. Um, I know Mike's going to be hounding me to watch it, probably watch it together. Me, uh, a few of us probably get together and watch this thing. But reach out to your local TV provider uh, so they can set you up with watching it. If not, I'm pretty sure you can find it on Fight TV. And also stick around after we preview this uh, this weekend's card because we got Thierry Sokaju who jumped on board with us and he talked about his match coming up this weekend and how he's preparing for it against Mighty Mo. So uh, really interesting weekend for for combat sports, in particular bare knuckle boxing. So guys, thank you for listening, tuning in. Uh, hit like, share, and subscribe. Enjoy the show. So who are you taking in this weekend's fights? I know who I got, and it's not who you think. So I'm going to take my picks over to the world's safest and most trusted online gambling site and make a few bets. That's right, it's BetDSI.com. With more than 20 years' experience in the online gaming industry, BetDSI has the best sign-up and deposit promotions on the web. They also boast more deposit options than any other betting site, including fast, free, and secure payouts. Also, for our listeners, they are offering a special promotion where you can build a bigger bankroll and get 100% sports cash bonus when using our promo code Fighters Corner, all one word. That's 50% more sports cash by using our promo code Fighters Corner. Check out BetDSI for all your online gaming needs. This episode is sponsored by B2 Digital. B2 Digital is doing some really cool things in the mixed martial art world. They're kind of creating a farm league for the uh, bigger shows. And they are listed on a publicly traded company, listed on a stock exchange, BTDG on the stock exchange. Um, They support our show. Guys, please, please, if you guys like this show, please give them a look. And if you can throw some support their way, man, it would be greatly appreciated. Also, please don't forget to subscribe, hit like, share, all because you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Radio Player, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, TuneIn Radio, and the guy sitting next to you on the train is probably listening to us too. And if you're a fan of boxing, jiu-jitsu, kumite, and even capoeira, go check out my guys at UCL MMA. These guys are the heavyweight champions of mixed martial arts shows. And if you think you're the next Johnny Lawrence, go to their website at uclmma.com, shoot them an email, and tell them John sent you before asking their matchmaker that you want to defend your All-Valley Karate Championship versus one of their fighters. That's uclmma.com. Welcome back to the Fighters Corner Podcast. I'm John Garoski, and with me is Mr. Mike Davis. Whoa, John, I tell you what, it's amazing. Just, uh, I, it's almost like we need Miguel back. I, I just didn't like yeah, the Yeah, I miss Miguel. I miss Miguel. <laughs> I miss Miguel. Okay. You know, I don't think he misses us, though. No, no, for Hell sure. No. 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 All right, well, John, on the docket today, we got Bare Knuckle Boxing. Bare Knuckle Boxing. It seems like it's becoming more of a popular thing now. You know? Well, everyone's kind of jumping in. Yeah. You know, this whole, I think Malinaji thing has... Uh, sort of helped put it more on a, kind of more this, real estate on the map, you think? Yeah, a little more spark. In yeah. It. And it's something that we've been covering for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Mind. And you notice, too, like, they, they keep trying to bait Conor McGregor into this. You know? It's to come out. Bro. It's not going to happen. But they yeah. like attaching his name to everything or anything bare knuckles. So. Yeah. But this weekend, we have... Valor. Valor. BKV1, yeah. I think it's... Yeah, VBK1. VBK1. Valor VBK. Bare Knuckle. I like that. Yeah, I okay. do. Yeah, I do. It's got a nice little ring to you it. Know, here, here's the thing. They don't have a fist logo, you know. Um, they got the lion. They got the lion. You know, you got Ken Shamrock involved. My guy. Um, but in essence, they're attempting to do something new. They got a pit format. 
things like the I can't, can't wait to see this thing. I, I'm really interested. I'm definitely buying a pay per view. Oh I mean, yeah, you and I are addicted to combat sports. Yeah, no, it's 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 a on paper it is a very very good card. The four man heavyweight tournaments legit. You haven't seen that since the nineties. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Early 2000s. Yeah, early 2000s, right. You Four know? man tournament, one one night. Yeah, so I mean, so so for the listeners that are listening, so there's a, a main event heavyweight tournament. You got Marimo uh, Saliga versus um, Theory Sokuju. Versus Theory Sokuju. Yeah, and then yeah, on the, first, other, on the other bracket, round. you got uh, Jack May versus Mark Goodbeer or Godbeer. Godbeer. And, and I'll tell you what, Godbeer might be the dark horse. I've seen him fight in Europe. Uh, he's obviously had a UFC career. Yep. Um, he is, out of all four of them, in terms of bare-knuckle boxing, he's got more experience than all of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's – I agree with you. I think him, him – his experience out in Europe he, – He's and, done and, the hay bales, and he's also done uh, BKBTM, which is based out of London right now. On yeah. On the O2, they just had an event. So I noticed with these European fighters, these European bare-knuckle boxers – Polished. They're more polished. It seems yeah. like they've been doing it for – 10, 15 years. Yeah, it's, you know what I mean? it's like who's that guy? Tyler Goodjohn just fought this past weekend. He fought Sean George. And, and I'll tell you this right now that Sean was an George. War. How many times have I called you and I've literally sworn my child's life that this Sean George guy was, was the real deal? Yeah. And he is. Yeah. And Goodjohn figured it out. I haven't seen that fight yet, but I'm going to purchase it, it, it and watch war. it before it, the it, weekend. I've yeah. seen pictures of uh, Tyler Goodjohn after he got done with it. And it looked like he blew through a, the front of a windshield. Yeah. You know, during dude, a car accident. Dude, Sean George is the real deal. Yeah. And even though he didn't win that fight, he's the real deal. But this heavyweight tournament, what's going to be telling to me is they have two alternate fights on the undercard as well. And it's going to kind of like be the early UFCs. Mm-hmm. You're going to see if somebody can make it two two fights. Yeah. I mean, how many times have we watched a UFC tournament? And, I mean, obviously it was an eight-man, so you had to fight yeah. three times in one night. <laughs> right. Where... Uh, you know, pretty often the alternate would slide right in, you right know, into the final spot. Yeah, I mean, you got James McSweeney and you got Lavar Johnson who are taking those spots too. You know, on, as probably you know slide ins in case something happens. Mm-hmm. You know, you're or you're you're see you're well, gonna see. The good thing is is like when the UFC were doing their tournaments, you'd have an eight man tournament with uh, two alternate brackets on it. But the alternate brackets only fought one time that night yeah. to everybody that was in the finals that already fought twice. Right. In this, everybody's got one fight. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see who's the top seed out of the alternates because yeah. the likelihood of somebody having to slide in is is more likely than not. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the J.C. Lamas fight, the J.C. Lamas versus Mike Richmond fight. All right. So J.C. Lamas is... He's a dog, man. Dude, he's based out of Puerto Vallarta. And Puerto Vallarta generally is kind of looked at like the uh, the ugly stepbrother for Guadalajara. Mm-hmm. And Guadalajara's, they got some legit boxing gyms there. Yeah. But some people have migrated to Puerto Vallarta, which is about a four-hour bus ride from there. It's uh, further, I want to say further north. Yeah, I think it's forth, further north. And um, his gym in Puerto Vallarta is legit. Mm-hmm. And the thing about him and his career in mixed martial arts is that he's fought wolf after wolf after wolf. So his his MMA record is beat up. Yeah. And then when he came over to BKB, he fought uh, Chris Lytle in Cancun. Mm -hmm. He almost finished Chris Lytle in that first round. And And he he told everyone that's what he was going to do. And that's not easy to do. The guy's only been finished one time in his entire like career. Cut or something yeah, like Joe that. Joe Riggs. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. He's never been finished no. in a professional career. That's and crazy. After that fight, man, mm-hmm. Chris hasn't fought since. He's, he's, I think he retired because of it. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what kind of dog you got yeah. in J.C. Lamas. Yeah. You know, just skimming over the card again, too. I, I think, uh, like you said, I, I agree with you 100%. Mark Goodbeer is the definite dark horse. In fact, and people might be overlooking him because he doesn't have the name of like a Mighty Mo. I don't care. Or, or, yeah, Mighty Mo. Yeah, Mighty Mo. And the thing is, all right, behind the scenes, people are going, dude, you got a Samoan in there. Yeah. You can run over a Samoan, like, with a, a semi-truck, yeah. and they're just going to pop right back. Yeah, it's not <laughs> enough. It's not enough. So, I mean, we had Theory Sukujo on er- earlier, and, uh, you know, we're going to tie it in with this podcast. And essentially, he's saying he's just going to hit him as hard as he can, as fast as he can. Yeah. When, in my opinion, based on my knowledge of how f- 
they're not wrapping any hands over there. Mm-mm. It's just wrist only. Yeah, and then no clinching either. And no clinching. You got to go punches and bunches, mm-hmm. and you just got to go speed, speed, speed. And uh, I hope Theory kind of figures that out before it get, that fight gets too deep into yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, even the uh, the co-main event, which is listed here, is Ishii Smith versus Esteban Payan. Dude, Ishii Smith's a real deal. I know. I know. I'm so looking forward to him just, yeah. just and, waxing And he took some Esteban time out. off. And, you know, Esteban, yeah, it, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm intrigued, man. I'm very, very intrigued. All right. So when we first started this, this podcast. Here we go. Are you December doing this every time? Like- no, no, no. But December last year, no interest, no interest. And you were right. Yeah. You are right. Is your interest starting to grow? Yeah, when they start putting the pieces in place and they start drawing in with the fighters that the name fighters, you know, that draw interest. You you want to see like how they would do when they change lanes into a different sport. And, and, and you know what, man? Even if they're considered a retread, mm-hmm. you know, somebody that's you know been to the peak of their regular career, yeah. whichever whether it was MMA <laughs> or boxing, and now they're trying to you know quote unquote cash in on this new sport. Mm-hmm. Man, it's fun to watch. It is. And I think they're doing it right by bringing in veterans and then bringing in some younger guys, too, to sort of like... Tie it in with Shamrock. In. Yeah. I, oh, mean, yeah. I mean, everyone's trying to get into yeah. it. And Shamrock's really excited for this, too, man. I mean, when we, when we BS with him last weekend about it, like, man, he was gung-ho on this. He, My interest is the pit, how that plays out. No, me too, man. How My interest, you travel with it, I am so intrigued by it. I really, I mean, is it like, is me built like a stable? I mean, is it like a legit pit with like, I don't know, man. I mean... <laughs> I'm thinking like blood sport, you know what I mean? Like that, 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 that would be pretty badass. Like if they had that board where they put the names up, yeah. that'd be pretty badass. <laughs> well, there you have it, man. So you got, um, this Saturday, uh, September 21st uh-huh. on pay-per-view in, what do you say? North Dakota, North Dakota, one of the Dakotas, but, yeah. um, this Saturday night, Let's check it out, dude. What's the pay-per-view price? Does it does it list it? Uh, let me see. Let me quickly scan over. No, it doesn't have it listed. But, but it says order through your cable provider, Dish, DirecTV, or fight. through the Fight TV app. I'm probably so. just go to Fight TV. It's probably like 20 30 bucks. Yeah, yeah man. It's I'll, worth it. I'll it's check it out. It. All right, Excellent. guys. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right, Chad. With us, we have, on the phone, we have Theory Sokuju. Hey, Theory. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, now, Theory, you're in a four-man tournament, uh, a bare-knuckle boxing tournament for Valor coming up on Saturday. How did you get involved with this? Um, fairly so simply, my coach, Ed Buckley, called me once. He told me, hey, you know, there's a bare-knuckle. Uh, initially, it was just a fight, but then it turns out um, um, the tournament, and that's how I got into it. It was just a phone call. It was just a phone call, huh? I mean, did you did you want to go into bare knuckle boxing after seeing it, or is this something that's just kind of uh, something you're trying? No, I've, I've always been interested ever since I, you know, kind of started making some noise, and I think I had um, an offer in England to go there about a year ago, but it kind of fell through. So, but this one came through, and now I'm here. Okay, so now you came to the United States on a student visa, am I correct? <laughs> yeah. No, to a visa, then I went to a student visa, yeah. Okay, so, and then you get caught up in the fight game. And uh, yes, sir. F- from what I understand, like, you, you were obviously doing judo <laughs> back home in Cameroon. And then when you came here, you started to explore different avenues of combat sports. And one of the, the, the first team that I saw that you landed with was Team Quest. How did you make that initial yes, connection? Sir. How did you make that initial connection with them? Um, at the time, I believe that Henderson wanted a, a judo player to train with because uh, he had a fight against, uh, I believe it was, um, I should have forgot his name. Um, he was fighting a judo player, and me being a judo player, he invited me to train with him. And, uh, you know, that's how it started. He saw my skills, liked it, and I saw this part, and I fell in love with it. All right, so one of your early coaches that I used to, that I've seen corner you was Robert Folis. He was the former one of the former coaches of Team Quest. Can you tell us what type of impact he had on you as a coach and in your life? I mean, um, to tell the truth, I trained with him just a couple, a few times. When we went to Oregon, because I was based out of um, Jamaica, that he was out of Oregon. Mm-hmm. Although we ran into each other a few times while you know 
big as it's been. And even in Russia, when uh, Madeleine and Sarcedo, it was pretty cool, cool dude. He was, um, you know, nice person to be around, knowledge and everything. Okay, so in that gym, you guys had a lot of all stars. You had Evan Tanner, you know, Randy Couture, Chel Sonnen. <laughs> what were those days like? Uh, you know, somebody coming from just a judo background to obviously getting thrown in, into a wolf den. What were those practices like there? Oh man, those um, I remember Monday at two thirty, and then Thursdays at uh, seven p.m. Where I want to kill you, kind of days. Which is, I think we lost so many brain cells those days. Where, huh? <laughs> yeah, those were the fun days. We just war. Just, you know, you just come in and try to blast everybody with what you got. So you guys were full out fighting in in practice. Uh, am I correct with that? Oh yeah, yeah. There was no. I don't. I, I don't. I think at the time, if if we would have started earlier with like cameras, like people do now, like record practices and everything. Oh man, you just see some crazy fights in the in the room. So, did you ever see anybody uh, get run out of the room that was actually uh, you know kind of a famous? Fighter in the in the world of combat sports? No, 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 because pretty much those were much weight weight wise, and no, I can't remember an instance of that happening. No. How was Chris leaving in those rooms? Uh, Chris leaving, he block punches with his face. And yes, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, I have no doubt you punched him. Right. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he'll just dive and come right at you. doesn't matter how many times you hit him. That's awesome. Okay, so you're in a four-man tournament. Um, you're, the opening uh, bout is against, uh, you know, King Mo. Mighty 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 Mo. Different person, <laughs> right? Mighty Mo, the Samoan. Um, wh- yeah. What are you thinking in regards to this fight, in regards to strategy? You know, it's... um. It's all about, you know, hitting as hard as you can and as fast as you can without getting hit. So, because there's no doubt every single one of us can just end the fight in a second. So, and the difference this time is there's no gloves involved. So, it would be interesting. Yeah, I, I expect it to be fireworks. I mean, both of you guys are two heavy hitters. Seasoned fighters. Seasoned fighters. Um, I can see this as being... Possibly fight of the night. I think that's the. I think you guys got the hardest draw out of the four people. Although God Beer is a, a stud as well. I mean, there there isn't a punk in that tournament. Yeah, theory, theory, <laughs> theory for this for the, for for preparing for Mighty Mo. Who are you training with? Are you still with Team Quest, or, or have you ventured off into yeah. a more of a boxing gym? Or are you still with Team Quest then? I'm still with Team Quest, and then also I trained with one of the you know um, Joey Beltran who's also. Um, a bandical fighter and yeah. try to mix it up a little bit. Oh, so you're training with Joey Beltran? Yeah. Man, that guy is a warrior. Yeah, he can teach you a few things. Yeah, that guy is a warrior. <laughs> so you win this four-man tournament. What's next for you? Well, it's one fight at a time. First step is mighty more, and then we go from there because I can sit here and tell you everything you want to hear, but in reality, it's Saturday. That's when everything goes down. Okay. So. You're... Your MMA career, when you look at it, it's insane. Like your first few fights, <laughs> the amount of confidence that Team Quest had in you in regards to putting you in with the top guys in the world. Like it, it, there yeah. was you, no doubt that there was a lot of confidence yeah, in your skill set. You, you basically came from Cameroon and got thrown to the dogs right away. What was it like walking <laughs> to the ring with uh, knowing that you were going to fight Ricardo Arona? You know, um, training with guys like Dan, Randy, and all the other guys made it where uh, it's just another guy. You know, I, I had, you know, I had tons of guys in the room who beat me up on a daily basis, and I was like, man, it's just gonna be another guy. I'm gonna try to punch through. So, you know, so, like I said, with the quality of guys we had in the room, it was just normal. It made it seem normal. Yeah, you know, that, that's fantastic. That, that honestly, like, I, I could see, like, jitters and stuff like that kind of getting into the way because Arona's been around so many different blocks. But, you know, like you said, you're sitting in a wolf's den. 
Yeah. Um, H- have you seen the layout of this uh, of this pit that that Ken talked about for Valor and on the event that you guys are fighting at on Saturday? Have you seen it? Have you seen the structure? Have you seen this this pit that uh, Ken described that you guys are going to be fighting in on Saturday? Have you seen the layout yet? <laughs> No, we walked we walk by earlier today. They were still trying to put it up, and I kind of have an idea. I saw the, the initial layout of the of the platform, so it would be interesting. Do you, do, you see there, do you see there being any disadvantages, that there's, like, no ropes, nothing to, you know, nothing to hold you back? You think you really can't corner anybody in a pit like that, right? Well, in a way, it doesn't make much difference because when you train in a room, most of the gyms don't have ropes or anything. It's an f- open flow. So it's, um, what's the word? Not really, because training in, in the gym, it's pretty much an you know, open flow, just like that. And then you got your area where you got, you got training partners around you don't want to run into. So you got your little corner where you kind of move around. So I don't think it will make uh, much difference. Theory, what do you think we could expect from you and Mighty Mo on Saturday. <laughs> uh, a lot of punches and a lot of uh, brain cells being being <laughs> lost. So. Well, speaking speaking of brain cells, I know your parents are they doctors? Am, am I right when I say that? No, no, my brother's a doctor. Your brother's a doctor. Yes, I, I used to work for Bodog, and I remember they were you know shopping you around. You after Pride. And I also recall, like, your parents, they weren't happy with your choice in regards to, uh, you know, fighting. What, what is your family's view of what it is you're about to do this weekend? You know what? Um, I haven't talked to them about it yet. So <laughs> it's going to be a surprise. I think they have an idea, but they, they're just not sure what it is yet. So. <laughs> Have you ever thought about going back to Cameroon and doing events and just uh, headlining an event in your home city? Yeah, but uh, there's, I mean, it's hard because of the infrastructures and the setup and everything. It's really, like I was telling this, I can't remember what I was telling this the other day. You get to a gym out there, there's four pair of gloves for the whole gym to use. So it's, it's tough. It's a, it will be awesome, but we're not there. Hopefully, we'll get there soon. Francis Ngannou's got a, a gym out there right now, and that's one of the first, you know, place where there'll be full on MME and everything. Other than that, it, it's going to take a minute for that to happen. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good. Okay. Well, theory. We appreciate your time. Good luck. Good luck on Saturday. I know, I know you got your hands full <laughs> against Mighty Mo on on Saturday. We're definitely going to be watching, and I encourage uh, listeners to tune in as well. Um, Valor, it's the, the event, it's v, VBK1, it's going to be on pay-per-view, yes. the very first one, um, I know when I talked to Ken a few days ago, he mentioned to me that, you know, this is going to be the first of many events, you know, coming up, uh, so hopefully, Theory, we see more of you down the line, and hopefully you get your hand raised. It'd be nice. On Saturday, yeah. you know, it'd be nice. So, good luck uh, versus Mighty Mo, and good luck in your bare-knuckle boxing career. Thanks, Theory, take care. All right. All right, bye-bye. Thank you. Have a good day now.